Ladies and gentlemen, April is officially the month of critical software vulnerabilities. If you haven't installed any updates or any hotfixes to any of your programs yet this month, then there's a very good chance that you are running a vulnerable system. And today's vulnerability video is about another piece of software that is a daily driver for millions of people all over the world, especially in corporate environments that hackers are most likely to target. Isn't that wonderful? Putty, a widely used SSH client and file transfer client is vulnerable to a key recovery attack under certain circumstances. So the vulnerable versions here are 0.68 through 0.80 when the victim is specifically using ECDSA private keys, which are using the NIST P521 curve. This vulnerability allows for an attacker to compromise the victim's private key if they are able to collect just a few dozen signed messages from the victim and they have the victim's public key, which of course is supposed to be public anyway, as the name implies. So all of this information here, you know, signed messages, the amount's gonna depend on how often the victim is signing messages, uh, but it's all pretty much public information that's very easy for an attacker to gather. and. Because this vulnerability compromises the private key itself and not just a single session that it's being used for, it can effectively give an attacker access to the system with the same level of permissions as the victim whose key was compromised. And the attacker can also sign messages with the victim's key to make it appear as if the messages were coming from the victim. And to make matters worse, this vulnerability can compromise private keys even if they were generated with another SSH client. So maybe you have some private keys that you know now you're forced to use them with putty for you know whatever reason maybe there's a corporate policy change and you have to change your ssh client but not necessarily your keys if those keys were used with putty for signing at any time they could be compromised the issue is not just with the putty gen function so it's really recommended to replace those private keys if you have a key of this type, regardless of whether you're using PuTTY right now or not. Now, like I said, PuTTY is a really popular piece of software, but not just because a lot of people are using PuTTY directly. There's other popular programs like FileZilla, WinSCP, TortoiseGit, and Tortoise SVN that all have vulnerable versions of PuTTY as a dependency. Uh, so again, it's very likely that those 521-bit ECDSA keys are compromised, and it's also very likely, like I said earlier, that you have some software updates to install if you're using any of those other programs. Now, the good news is the 521-bit keys that this software bug could result in the compromise of are not the most commonly used cryptographic keys out there. And so far, there aren't any reports of keys compromised in this way being used by bad actors to do any malicious stuff. It seems like, kind of like the XZ backdoor, that this bug was caught and patched before it could be widely exploited. Now, as far as the technical details of this bug go, there's a couple of really good write-ups about the issue that I'm gonna leave in the description for the crypto nerds to read. But to just break things down really quickly, the problem lies with the one-time secret values that all DSA signatures require, better known as a nonce. If an attacker is able to guess your nonce, then they can effectively guess your private key. So that's something that you want to make sure is random, uh, a randomly generated nonce, and you also want to make sure that you're not reusing nonces. Now, these days, all major operating systems and programming languages have their own libraries 
to allow you to generate random numbers or pseudo random numbers. Uh, and these libraries really are a godsend because if you stop to think about it, random numbers are needed everywhere. I mean, it's needed in all kinds of software from cryptography to video games and programming randomness is really difficult to do. And these days, it's really not recommended to try to program randomness yourself unless you really know what you're doing. But there was once a time, just like all software problems where you had to figure it out yourself. There wasn't just some code that you could copy paste off of GitHub. Uh, but back in 1999, when Putty was originally written, the Windows operating system, which Putty was originally written for, did not have a random number generator, or at least according to the author, it didn't have a very good one because again, RNG is really, really hard to get right. So without any good RNG to rely on, Putty generated the nonce in a deterministic way by first computing a SHA-512 hash whose input is the private key and the message to be signed. And this technique for um, randomness, I mean, of course, as long as your hashing algorithm is good, um, you should be getting fairly random numbers. Uh, and the specific technique of generating randomness in this deterministic way actually works fine. In fact, it's very similar to the techniques that were published about 10 years later after Putty was created in RFC 6979. And Putty's methods of generating the randomness this way still theoretically work for 256-bit and 384-bit curves. But in the case of the 521-bit curves, which are longer than the 512 bits that you get from SHA-512, the 521-bit nonce that's produced from the computation would always have its first nine bits set to zero, right? Nine bits is the difference between 512 and 521. And that nine bits of non-randomness is enough to derive the private key after collecting about 60 signatures. Now, if you're a lover of PuTTY or any of the other programs that depend on it, you are able to continue using this great piece of software and you can rest easier using it now, knowing that the method of DSA nonce generation is now relying on the standard outlined in RFC 6979. And I really like what the author of this patch mentioned in the second to last paragraph about how the simplest fix to this bug would have been to patch the existing nonce generator to just use a longer hash, because if it was longer than 521 bits, then it should have worked. You know, you can just reduce the amount that you're using from it, like in the other shorter curves. Uh, or they could have just concatenated multiple SHA-512 hashes. But, you know, instead of doing that so that they can continue using their own method, which they came up with a long time ago, you know, even before the industry standard, they just decided to now switch to the industry standard, putting user security before their pride. That's so important, and I really wish that more developers would be like this. So kudos to them and make sure that you regenerate your 521-bit ECDSA keys, update all of your software, and if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it to hack the algorithm. And finally, check out my online store, Base.Win, where you can get awesome merch like the Libre Sleeveless Tee, the Tie-Dye Tour Tee, or accessories for your computer or smartphone. And as always, you can save 10% automatically at checkout by paying for your order in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.